go in three. So, Crystal B, have you ever played hide and seek with your supervisor at work? I'm not really because actually I'm like my own supervisor <laughs> actually at work, but you know, by all means. You you ought to try it. So uh yesterday I had told my boss that we was playing hide and seek with each other and she had to find me. That was the goal of the day. And and then she had the nurse tell me, no, no hide and seek. Like, yeah, we're gonna play hide and seek, woman, and you're gonna do it well. I mean, I'm I'm pretty hard to find though, so I'm really good at it hiding at work. That's good. You find a nice spot. That's good. That's good. I and that the, the people at my work when it, when I'm doing cleaning also in the restrooms they like to like sit and play on their phones for like twenty minutes, and then uh, I can yeah. enter the room, enter the restroom, or people will like you know like I have a routine and they just won't interact with me. Now mm-hmm. that's that is actually and, and it doesn't matter where you are. That's actually insubordination, you know. You, you are, you should be, if someone is, you know, knocks or says, you know, whatever it is, and you don't wish to recir- you know, you know, reciprocate and say something, mm-hmm. yeah, it's actually like borderline insubordination. I mean, that's not, it's not cool, you know, but there's, there's people that are older than us. Just think, you know, we're, we're, you know, you're, 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 you know, almost there and I'm like 34 and, you know. Almost there. What kind of shenanigans is this? Almost there. You're almost there, you know, really. But I will tell you hands down is that it's crazy that that people just can't, you know, older people can't. Why can't you be respectful? You were taught at a young age to be respectful of people. It doesn't mean it's who you are. Again, we're not going to go into the whole, you know, lines down the road. We're all human beings. Just be respectful. Be a decent person. That's it. Please be a decent person. That that's you're talking about those generation Z's that nobody liked. <laughs> well, them and some of the older ones and they're like forties, oh, fifties, and sixties. The, the, uh, bo- the boomers. The boomers that just don't <laughs> want to listen at all. Or they say, Oh, I can't hear you because I have I have hearing protection and baloney, baloney. I talk loud enough in the men's restroom. I talk in in the women's, I, I talk a little quieter. Because they all can hear me, but the men, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that what they do uh, outside of work, maybe they don't wear ear protection. If they do use equipment and it could be real noisy, they might have bad hearing. That's no big deal. But if someone even knocks or, you know, just, you know, God, be a decent human being, just be decent. <laughs> well, people don't have it in them to be a decent human being. <sighs> so, so, for, so, so let's start out because we're, we're, we're doing this. How was your day? How, how was your oh, day over? I forgot the intro. Welcome, everybody, to Same Cast Different Day Podcast. I'm Marta Roland here with my co host, Crystal B. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> of course, I, we're starting start totally a little forgot. preview. <laughs> totally little preview. I was going to say it anyways. So, welcome to Same Cast Different Day. And we just started out by just talking a little bit about what's going on, you know, with people, you know. So, and yes, welcome to the podcast, everybody. So, Martel. How's your day and week been? Because I can tell you, I'm not sure what's going on with, on my end, but let's hear yours first. Um, my week has been pretty good. I kind of hate my work assignment. Uh, I kind of been blowing off, kind of talking to old yeller. Um, other than that, it's been pretty good. It's been mellow. Um, I've been very sleepy lately this week. Like hmm. it's been hard for me to stay woke. Um, other than that, though, it's been pretty good. I mean, if we get like sleep, like enough sleep, at least like seven out, seven hours of sleep. Um, no, the other day, I think Monday night, I went to bed at like one thirty, and then I think Tuesday was it Tuesday night, I went to bed at like twelve thirty ish, and then I think Wednesday night, that's yeah, Wednesday is when I saw I fell asleep at like six o'clock, but then I had woke back up at like twelve one o'clock ish, so then I was up to like three four o'clock, and then slept for like an hour and a half, and it was back up to go to work. Oh my gosh. Oh. And then I kept falling asleep on and off today. So like I was supposed to go pick up a a, a pie from my uh aunt that she had made for one of my coworkers. Mm-hmm. But they had she had, they had paired her to make a pie. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, I forgot to go get it because I kept dozing off. Like I got up, I went to the bank, when it bought me a salad today and came back home and just kept waking up and falling asleep. Mm-hmm. I, I think <laughs> Maybe just not that the lack of sleep finally something caught up to you where it's like, okay, now the body wants to shut down. 
I, I will say, yeah. last Thursday after we had that storm and I had four hours of sleep, I was amazed I made it to work. <laughs> I was beeping amazed. I was amazed. My boss is like, Claire, you know, Crystal, I expect you to be calling in sick. And I'm like, uh, you know, I, whatever, it's work. I got to need to show up. I need to pay the bills. You know, I'm trying to save money up for my surgery. I said, so yeah, he was, you know, and actually a real snip real quick. As we uh, talk about that, um, we have talked about the last few podcasts, but if you actually get a chance, everyone, um, everyone on TikTok, and then actually, if you actually check out Martell's and my um, uh, Facebook page, actually, we have a, a same cast, different day podcast website from direct me, direct dot me, which is awesome. Um, if you want to check out my fundraiser, you can always do that too. There's always that option to check me out as direct direct me slash care bear one three one. Yeah, make, make sure, sure you check that out. You can check that out. If you wish to donate, leave a note. Um, and you wish to share that with people, please. We we we're we're not ask we're not asking for money by all means because once my surgery is done, we're gonna be um you know having a donation for for the podcast so we can upgrade stuff and do things. And have fun with everybody. Maybe travel around the world someday. I don't know. Get to meet people. I don't know. Maybe we'll sign your shirts or whatever hats. I don't know. Traveling around, I'm kind of jealous of uh, Brandon right now. Oh, oh yes, because he's he's in Italy. Yes, I am so jealous because I was supposed to be going next year, but then I ended up being off work for eight months, so that I missed that time left to start paying on a on the trip to go so uh, like now i have to put it off for like another year or whenever they do it again so i'm kind of jealous uh, <laughs> so as we started the podcast out before we introduce ourselves so how do you play hide and seek i'll talk about myself a little bit how do you play hide and seek with your supervisor i mean i see that you uh you have wrote some interesting notes <laughs> I've, I've seen those already that you actually have sent me uh through social media apps which is funny but so how do you how do you actually hide from your boss? Like so sometimes she doesn't know she's playing hide and seek with me. Well, okay, majority of the time she doesn't know she's playing hide and seek with me. But I know that at certain times where the supervisor comes and doesn't walk around and stuff. So be I like, okay, well, it's time for me to go hide. So I always make sure I'm never in the area when she's uh walking the air the floors and stuff. So most of the time be like, I see her, but she wouldn't see me. And then I get a page on my phone like, hey, I didn't see you. I'm like, ha, 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 I'm hiding from you. You got to find me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. She's never able to find me. Nobody can find me. It's very yeah. hard to find me. Especially if you work in a place where the, the square footage is over a million square feet. It's very hard to find me. <laughs> yeah, because you, you, you could be in any floor, any section. You know where you are. Yeah, but I mean, the thing I, is though, that literally they know. Like most of the time, when I'm when I'm hiding, I'm always on the floor. I'm just good at I'm just good at not being seen. There you <laughs> even, go. Even with a bright red scrub top on, I'm not. I'm very good at not being seen. That's crazy. That is nuts. That's crazy. I mean, I I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's just nuts. That, I mean, I mean that, I'd be that, bored, and then like I said, I just and, and but, I, I kind of hate my job at the same time still. So, yeah. And then I sometimes like, well, I'll get paid enough to do the work that they ask me to do, so I'm not going to do all the work that they ask me to do, and then I go hide. It, and you know, see, the problem is a lot of companies, and it, it's that it hasn't changed. I mean, since you know, talking to people, even starting that had jobs. Now we're not talking jobs from like the nineties, two thousands. We're talking jobs like when you had in the eighties and seventies and going back, you know, to early nineteen hundreds, mm-hmm. where where people where companies actually gave a damn. And and I don't mean to swear about, it, but it's true. They gave a damn about their employees. They actually cared about them. They would be like, if you need extra time off, whatever else. The problem is, in nineteen seventy-eight, the system went from taking care of employees being greedy people in that that are that are running the companies and that's too bad now i'm not gonna say all are we're not, i do not want to i we're not trying to put companies down but i think a lot more companies really need to refocus on what people need not what they want what do you need you know do you what what are what are some incentives to keep you there you know because 
every company, all of a sudden you put your notice in. It's a week, two weeks, whatever else, a month, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They try everything to throw, throw stuff at you. But I said, the problem is they can throw everything at you, but it's not going to change. Right. If you, if you're already in a toxic environment, why stay there? You know, you, you just need to branch out. I mean, I'm even trying to branch out myself. Okay. I love my job. It's great. The but issue after that I'm having is the people who work during the, the, the worst time of the pandemic, um, were treated very poorly. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't get, yes. we didn't get a hazard pay. We didn't get, no. um, no, anything really special. We didn't get, uh, I think, uh, well, December, they gave us like a $200 bonus when there were like other organizations who gave their people 12 to $1,400 bonuses. Um, so, and then, um, what else? And then like for like, so like for newer people coming in, they're bringing them in and making more money than the people that that's been there. And then on top of that, instead of treating the people that you already have there well, you're treating them like crap. Yeah. So like, you know, for the smaller guys like me, you know, we didn't get like some of the nursing staff got received. Oh, well, if you stay here for two or two, three, four years and you stay here and work for us, we're going to give you a $10,000 bonus. And and um, and for the smaller people, they didn't get anything. Got someone on your TikTok? Yeah, it says, name a football player for a edit RQ. I can't see from that far from a distance. Oh. I don't know what edit RQ is. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so it was throwing me off a little. But yeah, so, like I said, they like the smaller people didn't get anything. And it's like, it's the smaller people who was keeping this place open it's the smaller people doing the, the stuff that you know the higher people don't want to do and yet treat it the worst and then receive nothing during this whole entire pandemic the only and one thing they did give us was a free meal out the cafeteria but it wasn't like you can get whatever you wanted out the cafeteria is what they chose to give gave you out the cafeteria yeah they, they and like the food there sucked because like they don't fry, like, they don't have any fried foods. Uh, everything is out of grill, boiled, or baked. So there's not like there's any food there that people really, really would enjoy. And that's not, to me, I think everyone, and I think we talked about some of our podcasts was, to me, I feel that everyone that worked 2020 all the way through, okay? E even, even if you, even if you did not have a job, okay? All right. And if, even if they started us as a March of 2020 up until March of this year. I think to me, people that are working, okay, or got laid off or whatever else, should have got per month an extra thousand dollars tax free money. Nope. But that's what I'm saying. They should have. Uh, if I feel like if you wasn't working and you was already getting unemployment plus the extra six hundred dollars, uh whatever they was getting, I feel like that was enough. Okay, so just maybe then the people working okay now understand now, for the people working i feel like they should have got some type of extra sense of a thousand dollar tax free yeah for every month now those people should have got some working because those are people who are still getting up every day going to work putting their lives at risk risking catching a virus when there was no vaccine at a time literally can die because they're going to work now those yeah. people i feel like who should got bone got at least a, something out of this whole ordeal but got nothing and I will admit, I mean, I've, I worked, you know, through this pandemic since, well, I don't know, April, April, you know, of last year. I mean, I was laid off for a month, but, you know, that happens, you know, work sometimes slows down and you get laid off. But, hey, you know, to me, um, even though unemployment did come through for me, which was crazy, of all, all things in my life, um, I think that the people that are working it should have some kind of incentive. If you worked... 12, if you work 12 months, so say it's a thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. That's 12, 12,000 dollars tax free, right? To me, to me, if you would have given people even 10 grand, okay, that you worked a complete year through COVID before vaccine, right? Okay, you give people 10 grand, all right? Some people will spend it that worked, okay? Don't cry. There are people out there that really need stuff, okay? Don't cry, you know? Mm -hmm. But I don't think that because we are still part of this epidemic that 
you shouldn't, should, you shouldn't, I mean, everyone, sh- everyone that is working, I agree with that, should have some kind of extra hazard pay. And I, I agree with that. But then the huge, the big problem that I have is the people who didn't work and took advantage of not working and had the opportunity to go back to work and chose not to go back to work. And yet these people, uh, like, I don't agree with the, with the money they're coming up with help people pay their rent and stuff like that. I feel like if you had the opportunity to work or had some type of income coming in, you should not be eligible for that money. Mm-hmm. Because somewhere that at some point in time, if you're receiving the full unemployment benefits plus and plus uh, the extra six hundred dollars, and you're getting this every week, they're like that's more than you was making going to work. No matter oh, yeah. what your job was, that was more than what you was making going to work. Mm-hmm. So why weren't you able to pay your rent? Why weren't you able to pay your electric and gas bill? Like there is no excuse why so much, so much, so many people are getting evicted. Like you were literally getting free food. Like some of you were getting emergency food stamps where you were getting the, it, depending on how many keys you got, like there are people walk around with $7,000 worth of food stamps and have nowhere to even spend all this money or put this food at, but have $7,000 worth of food stamps. Jeez, so these people were not only already getting free food, but there was emergency pro- uh, emergency assistance people like um, energy assistance. I don't know what it's called in other states where they was paying people electric and gas bills. And then now you got this program to pay a rent. Like these people shouldn't be eligible for them things. If you had the means to pay it during the pandemic and you chose not to, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be able to qualify to get their rent paid and stop the eviction. I mean, you have, you know, to me in Wisconsin now, I believe I was told, told by September 1st, the extra $300 that people are getting for unemployment, mm-hmm. even though you still have to apply for jobs. You just have to do their typical things that I think that happened back in February or March of this year of 2021. So that actually, that actually took effect this month. I mean, well, July. It was like the end of July where they had to start actively looking for jobs in order to receive their benefits. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. So they okay. had all this year still where they didn't have to work or look for a job and was still was getting all these benefits and just chose still not to pay rent or whatever the excuse was. Which is completely stupid, by all means. That's dumb. You know, I'm, really. I mean, because if you're not working, cause it's not like a lot of these people are paying for child care because, for one, they wasn't working and their kids is not in school. So why do you need child care if your kids not even, if you're not even working? No, you, you can just you, you can. And, and, and they probably said, I can understand in certain situations where they're making maybe. 725, you know, and, and even even a waiters and waitress. Okay. Let, let's just let's talk about them real quick. They're mm-hmm. making two, three, four bucks an hour. Okay, plus tips. All right. You you don't know, do the math. If you're making two two hundred dollars, maybe the tips maybe three hundred dollars a week. I mean, you know, that's to me three hundred dollars a week is to me, you're I mean, you're almost living, you know, you know, you're living so poorly. It's not even funny. Because I live in paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's similar to me in my little situation where I live, you know. They're like, well, you got 24 hours to clean this up. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm sorry. I don't have, you know, I don't have tons of funds to be just snapping shit up like that. You know, just, right. it, I to think to me is, I think on the consumer end of it, I think a lot of these a lot of these um, fine print and this and that, just all this shit needs to be gone. Make it straightforward. Be like, listen, you're going to get, everyone gets, you know, like it's no different. Like say, say on your, you know, you pay your rent or whatever you pay, say you're a week late. Okay. Yeah. They'll charge you $5 or a small percent, whatever else. Okay. But don't ding somebody in their credit because just because they couldn't pay it all up front. Again, maybe, maybe they got something going on, you know, you know, let's look at the real picture. I, you mean, know, yeah, like- I, I agree with that if they're late like a week, but we're talking about people who went six, seven, eight, nine months without paying rent and had the means to pay their rent and just chose not to. Yeah, well, they, and they, they chose to, you know, now I, I'm just I'm, I'm just talking about those people that were waiters and waitresses. I'm just saying in restaurants, mm-hmm. but those people that they, they had enough time to save money, pay up their stuff, because uh, actually my, my uh, one of my parents and I were talking about this, that it's crazy that all that money they didn't pay in for rent, all the money they didn't pay in utilities, all that money they didn't pay for 
uh, car loans or house loans or whatever, whatever it is, you know, or whatever loans you have, student loans. Just like all that stuff was froze up until recently. And now, now you have to start paying it. So just think that big. So now instead of say, say, say your rent is like 500 a month plus an hour utility. So let's say you're paying a thousand dollars a month. I'm saying, right. Mm-hmm. Let's take a guess. Cause you could be, I'm not going to say that this numbers could work everywhere around the world, but in certain parts of the U S and you know, stuff like that, but just think. So now if you stacked up all this money that you saved up, right. And you, you went and bought a brand new TV and you had enough money to buy a different vehicle and all this other stuff like that. Instead of taking care of the bills, yes, to me, those people, I agree with you on that. They should not be babied anymore. No, Mm-mm. no. It, it, it was fine what Trump did to start it out. Okay. John L. J. Trump did a good thing by halting stuff. Yeah, to hold stuff. And but giving out the stimulus, uh, jump started the economy. Yeah. He did a good thing, and, and I, I agree with them on that. I, you know, again, we're not here to choose pop, political but, lines, but my like my whole thing is like, like you said, like, like they didn't really because like my car payments was still due, like, there was no freeze on my car payments, so all my stuff was still due during this pandemic, nothing froze for me, so I still have to pay even when I was off work. And I was receiving, I was getting only like probably like four or three to four hundred dollars when when I was off from work, and that was only three or four hundred dollars a week. I wasn't getting an extra six hundred dollars, and I was still able to pay my car note, car insurance, health, uh, my uh, health insurance, my life insurance. I was paying all my bills still, mm-hmm. and and but a lot of these people who was getting all this extra money on unemployment and plus stimulus checks and all these other things and resources like from from food stamps and all these places like they were taking this money like you said go on and go like as soon as a stimulus check came out walmart dropped the price of their tvs and everybody was at the stores buying flat screen tvs you saw everybody flocking to vegas you saw everybody mm-hmm. flocking to florida like yeah. these people took this money instead of paying their rent and bills and stuff they decided to go and took that money went on vacations yeah, they just they don't know how to manage their money. And yeah. a lot of people and don't I think it's fair that now the people who have been working during this whole entire pandemic is now picking up the bill for all these people who sat at home went on vacation and did this and that during this whole entire pandemic. And and again, that brings us right back to the hazard pain. I completely agree with that even if it was a ten thousand dollar check, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna make it an easy number, right? You know, to me. 10 grand, you dropped everyone that would, that did, you know, even, even if you, you know, depend on where you were working and depend on if you were laid off or whatever else, that's a different story. But if you were, you know, even if they had, I'd say, well, we can only give you eight, eight out of 10 grand, you know, you don't work eight out, out of whatever it is, you know, or 12 months, but it's the same, that chunk of money, you know, I understand there's some people that do make 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks now. Okay. And trust me, they probably aren't doing that bad off. Okay. But the people making, I'm just, just going to take a stab at it. The people make $35,000 a year or less mm-hmm. probably have the hardest time right now with the increased price of everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to be making 16 bucks an hour like, in, like, in the state of Wisconsin, like the, really. The price of food is very expensive. Yeah. And, and like I said, like the people who make, so basically the people who makes over $25,000 $25, a year receive no help, no state assistance. You get mm-hmm. no food stamps. You don't get rid of assistance. You don't get energy assistance. You get nothing. You get no help whatsoever. Nope. You're paying for everything that you have. You're paying yep. out of your own pocket with mm-hmm. no help. Mm-hmm. And and you got to think $25,000 is still not a lot of money no. to be making and survive off of and to be doing all this stuff out of pocket. It's, it's amazing that how many people are surviving. If you take that by fifty-two weeks, just out of the same, it's it's when maybe if taxes, you're probably looking at roughly, roughly, it's it's four eighty before tax. So I'm just gonna take, say it's about four twenty five, four thirty. So just think about that a week, okay? So you you know, and depending on if you have a credit card, and then uh, you know, if you're trying to save some money, it, oh. to be honest, to be honest, with you, this economy has not made anybody richer. So right, and I and so when I, mean, I first started at the company that I work for now, I was making ten seventy, and now I'm about seventeen something. I don't know how exactly how much it is, 
So, but when I first started there, after t- after two weeks, uh, when I after working two weeks after taxes, health insurance, uh, long term disability, short term disability, dental, and all the other things that come out your check, uh, retirement, all that stuff, I was only left for probably about six hundred and thirty dollars every two weeks. Oof. When right. I first started working for the company I'm in now. Twelve sixty a month. I mean, that's like, you know, just I mean oof. I mean I I may, I make just a little less than sixteen hundred a month or around that, you know, really right now. And it's it's with, with so it's come to the point where the price of gas and maintenance and just general stuff for vehicles to the point of I, I might, it's, it says, it says, is like people always say, hey, just stick with what you got or find something else. I might wind up buying a little front wheel drive car, you know, really for just the gas, just because oh, this is my only our option for saving money right now. Seriously. Yeah. That's the only yeah. way to go. Like a lot of people, like some people will tell me like, oh, you spend too much on your car. Like, I feel like I've worked hard enough to be able to drive what I want at this point. Yeah. Huh? And that's what I'm going to do. And and a lot of people and like I said, well, well, you don't make you make only you only do this, so you you do this for a living, so you shouldn't be like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I really hate that. And I feel like once you get to that certain point, like you feel like you work hard enough for it, and you're gonna find a way to make it work. Like I always tell people, people ask me like, do you work overtime? I say no, and they be like, why? I feel like I say if if I can't make it off the eight hours I work a day, the eighty hours a, the eighty hours a week that I I work. I mean, 80 hours of paycheck that I work. If yep. I can't make it off of that, then that means it's not meant for me to have it. No, Mm-mm. no. And, and, and it's the point where, you know, like um, one of my parents was in the union for 30 plus years. And, and he's, and they're like, I wouldn't work for a job at less than 20 bucks an hour right now, the way it is, you know, and a few years ago, you said 15 and he's like, mm-hmm. and, and okay, I'm, I'm their child, you know, and, if my parent makes a suggestion, no problem. I mean, I'm more than willing to look at the suggestion. And yes, I'm trying. I'm going to try better myself. You know, you're doing the same thing, Martel. We're both trying to better ourselves. Find something that actually, we, you know, it may start out good, and then who knows how it's going to turn out from there. But you know, what? if the benefits are there, if the money's more, and if it's going to be something long term, I mean, definitely. You know, really, by all means. You know, to me, people should be making. To me. A regular service industry job should not be making nine to like 13, 14 bucks an hour. It shouldn't be. Not anymore. I agree. You should be making 15 to 20 bucks an hour. Seriously. If you work in the service industry, actually, we both do this. We both work in the service industry. Um, I have worked in many different divisions of a service industry, and they don't pay well. They don't. Yeah, you're on contracts. I mean, yours isn't, but I'm on a contract. But it's like, really? You can't you can't think about everybody else that you're going to try to hire and bring incentives in by saying this and this, you know? I mean, now they're trying to get people in, you know, making more money than me. And I told my boss, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not training them. I'm not training them. Exactly. I'm like, you're going, to put, you're going to put me up above their pay scale for me to train them. Yeah, like, so like, like I said, I work in the healthcare field. And it's like, oh... They were like, oh, well, we need people to train. And I was like, well, it's like, uh, I didn't renew my preceptor. And I was like, why? I said, because it's not worth the extra. You're going to pay me an extra dollar twenty five an hour to train somebody like it's not worth it. I don't want it. It's not worth the headache. I don't want to do it. And on top of that, I'm not afraid to train somebody who basically coming in making more money than I am. It's just not going to happen. I, I mean, I think it's stupid. You know, really, companies are trying to throw incentives to get people to make more money. Well, you know what? Why don't you, instead of trying to throw, it's it's good to get new employees, okay? Try to get new employees in a company. But you know what? Pay those people that show up to work every day and give them the bonus. Give them the pay raises. But Keep them there. My whole, like for me, my whole thing is, is, you know, I'm considered a veteran at this facility. Oh, no, you're frozen for me. Uh-oh, Crystal is frozen. There we go. So, like, okay. I'm considered a veteran at this uh, facility. So, like, I've been there. I'm close to, I'm getting, like, I'm been seven years there now. So, I'm getting close to that 10-year mark. Wow. So for me to be there for working for your company for nearly almost 10 years and to bring, for you to bring in someone who's making more money than me and expect me to train them is a big no-no. 
Because if anything, you bring in your newer employees and you bring them in, and they mostly make less than the people who've already been there, mm-hmm. who put in their time. Like I put my time in to get to what the pay that I'm at now, and it took me what seven years to get to this pay. And then you're gonna bring in somebody that's fresh off the street making more money than me after you made me build work my way up to this. Like it's not fair. Mm-mm. No, no, Mm-mm. it's not fair at all. You should be treated this you should give the same treatment that not just a current employee does but as a new employee you should have the same that's it there should be no like like i understand people are going to be favored towards other people because they might be more like this person may like this person because they kind of connect them and that's fine again whatever everyone connects on different levels that's not a big deal but no favoritism or be like, I'm going to give this person a pay raise because they're doing awesome. And this person, well, they come to work, but I don't know, you know, I'm just okay with them. And, but you know what? I'm not saying they're, you know, what happens? Why are they just okay? Did you, did you have a talk with them? Did you speak with them? Did you find out what's going on? I mean, don't go wrong. I haven't been a team lead assistant manager for multiple companies in my past for a reason. I've only done it because just because nobody else wants to take the position. Okay. I mean, yes, it does come with incentives and, and pay raise and everything else, which I'll be getting. But the point of the story is that, is that I told my boss, I said, listen, if you want good employees, okay, I'll train them. Okay. I'll get the money for training them, everything else. Right. You know, but what, what you need to do is you need to, I said, I can't, I'm bull, I'm just not your number two. You need to take care of them. That means you need to, reach out to them. If they're having a problem or they need to go home sick or whatever else, then make sure you are. I don't know. Crystal has frozen again on us, everybody. So I don't know where she was going with this. Please power the Christmas tree be with this. Please power the Christmas tree. Oh, she's frozen on TikTok too because we're live on TikTok, everybody. Claire. AKA Crystal B is frozen on TikTok. So she might have to reboot here. Okay, we are back. Well, as we were, as we were talking about, um, we were talking about the hazard pay for people actually working during COVID, which to me, I think is a great thing. Um, first of all, why people were not paid that. I mean, we talked about a little while ago about companies taking care of people. So it's just true. Mm -hmm. But why can't, why can't we get some kind of hazard pay? And you know what? Um, You know, recently I spoke to a customer service person, you know, talking about things and they even agreed with me too. Now, again, I'm not going to say what company was not like that. I keep that all private. But to me, I think that was a solid thing. Like, why can't why can't we just take care of those people that are already already out there in the front lines working? Not just mm-hmm. doctors and nurses, everybody. That is true. You know, don't don't be taking care of the it's it's great to take care of everybody, okay? Don't just take care of certain people or people in that certain branch of a company, okay? Take mm. care of everybody, okay? All right. I mean, yeah. Go ahead. And and to me, it's no different. Like the like the the LGBT. Sorry, I'm I'm stuttering here. Like the LGBTQIA group, two plus. Okay. You know, we all work together. Okay. If if the LGBTQIA was a group, okay, or a business, right? Okay. Uh-huh. We have a, a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds, right? And all over the world, right? Mm-hmm. It'd prob- probably be a, bo- a billionaire company, okay? But we would include everybody with everything, you know, good benefits and everything else. I'm just taking an example, okay? So as an example of being part of this group, okay, or even being an ally, is that you're, you're agreeing that you're willing to stand up and, and fight for us. So... If we're all part of the same group, why can't companies fight for us and give us, you know, to me, why can't, why can't a CEO, a board directors, why can't 
the people that make good money, why can't they just go and be like, hey, by the way, we're going to take money out of our accounts when we're getting paid, okay? And we're writing everybody out a check once a month. And I'm going to pay the taxes on them. Not just me, but I'm saying it as an example. Mm-hmm. Why, why, why can't we have that? Why, what's wrong with that? Um, because people want to keep their money and they're selfish. <laughs> I don't know. And, and that's and that's true, you know. I mean, we as we we talk about, you know, I mean, I've I've had a rough week already. It's been one thing after another has been thrown at me. Which, I mean, at least it's some small stuff and things have been able to get fixed. But mm-hmm. um, I will say this week has been turning out to be. I'm not sure if it's like a full moon. I don't know myself with the full moon going on or whatever, but I. I Who knows. I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. But you know what? It's true. It's greed. It sucks. Why Why you got to be so greedy, you know? Right. You know, I mean, I mean, there's a song out there by Taylor Swift saying, why you got to be so mean? Well, why you got to be so greedy? You know, why? Why can't Why can't you just be a decent person? I mean, there there was there was a, a CEO I watched a video a few years ago. This guy was willing to pay his employees a dividend of his salary. I remember hearing I was, about that. I was like, wait, what? This guy is making billions of dollars. Billions. Like, just making money, right? You know? Mm-hmm. He's making tons of money. And he's like, hey, by the way, you you know, he got his whole business together. I don't know how many people was. Could have been 10, 15. I don't know. Could have been more. And everyone got like, I don't know, maybe a twenty or $30,000 bonus. Just like, like that. Oh, wow. And I'm like, Wait, wait. Why, you know, you know, why be stop being greedy? You know, it, it, you're right. you're controlling the wrong thing. Take yeah. care of the people. Take care of the people. You are correct. And for the listeners out there, if you're wondering why there's a change in audio, um, Crystal has some internet hiccups, so we are doing this, recording this the classic way with Crystal on the phone and. <laughs> With my phone on speaker, with a microphone by it. <laughs> yep. So sorry to say, everyone, but yeah, I had had to do the old-fashioned way of when we actually had to call people on a phone <laughs> and, <laughs> before they had Zoom or Facebook Live and all this other good stuff like that. You know, it happens. Um, you know, people could run into stuff. Could have been some that got. You know, I don't know. It could have been a storm. Who knows what could have? Who knows what could happen? I I always say. I always think of it this way. It's kind of like um, when somebody hits a telephone pole mm-hmm. that has electricity on it and it just knocks the transformer out to the house. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't do just that to the house. It knocks the whole block or half the city or whatever, you know? So, so just, I don't know how far this outage is. I haven't, I don't really look because I don't have internet right now, but I'm like, well, whatever. That's the way that goes. So, but, um, but it's pretty funny because when you call the company up and tell them that it was for work related, mm-hmm. all, all of a sudden they're like, "Wait, what?" I'm like, "This is work related. I'm on like, I'm on a uh, yeah. We have a set time when we're doing this." She's like, "Oh," she's like, "Well, I'm gonna put a note down in your account to make sure that there's no issues, or hopefully they can get it up and rolling sooner." So, you know, who knows? Maybe they will. I so, so far nothing. So, wow. I don't know. Wait, I don't know. so you have no power right now? No, no, I, I have power. I have power. Oh, okay. I, I, I just don't have internet. Oh, okay. Well, that sucks. So. Damn you, Spectrum. And, and I will say that, you know, Spectrum used to be Charter, and I don't know what it was before. I have no idea, you know, by all means. But, you know, I this brings up a good point. And everyone in business, because, you know, Granted, I'm only new to it since April, okay? So I'm only new to, to the company since April. What I got to say is that sometimes you wonder if having a portable hotspot, like a prepaid hotspot sometimes, mm-hmm. for situations could help. And, um, you know, in business, it's, I mean, businesses always have, you know, per monthly hotspots or prepaid or else. And, and um uh, Sometimes in life, you know, and this is up to me, Mark, telling off, look at maybe this is a good backup plan that we might have to look into um, some other, you know, and, and and as we're trying to get out there, you know, we the website, again, direct.me slash same cast, different day podcast. Mm-hmm. We can leave, leave notes about us and everything else. 
may, maybe as we can start getting sponsors and people to um, sponsor us for, you know, different shows, then maybe we'll be able to upgrade and maybe we'll get some stuff. So maybe then we will have to do the old fashioned phone way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll actually be able to keep our zoom going, which would be awesome. That'd be phenomenal. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah. Good thing. I, I remember I got, I got the backup plan. <laughs> uh, of all things in our life of all things you know of all things. i mean it, it's working out so like only play like when the video version come out they're only gonna be able to see me for this part so sorry if you didn't want to see this mug i'm sorry you know no, stuff happens fine. it's okay don't worry <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be back next i'll be back next week i promise we'll get there next they'll get there next go and hopefully the next few hours with me, so don't worry. I mean, so by t- we're pre-recording by t- two episodes in the same day, so it's going to be like two weeks before they see you. <laughs> I, I'm going to be out on vacation. That's what I'm going to be on. <laughs> I'll be out on vacation, so that's why people can't see me at all. No, no. Oh, no. Lord, have mercy. But may- maybe we'll see what happens. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to do a little bit of video editing and put myself in there. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what I can figure out. I don't know. I don't know. Chris has got to figure that one out. I still have to figure that out. That's, fine. That's all right, though. So. Yeah, it's fine. As, as for the old school way, yes. The way, way back when they actually made phones, before cell phones, they actually had a call. So literally, like, a radio station would have to call like, and talk to somebody over the phone, okay? And they would have an interview. They would do an interview, you know? You'd have uh-huh. all your DJs and do it this way. So... We're doing something that's probably been around for a long time, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone's so used to technology and internet and everything else like that, so when it's out, it irritates people. Um, and I was kind of wondered in a way that why does it, why don't companies, especially internet service providers or known as ISPs, why don't they have a backup plan? Like a low-speed internet, okay? A low-speed internet like where if say something goes down right so mm-hmm. you can't you won't be able to play video games right you might be able to get do a zoom or chit chat about your friend but you won't be able to do much that's it you won't be able to do a whole lot which True. really sucks but at least on the good note is they have some kind of backup me, where you had something to at least do basic stuff that's not the end of the world I mean, yeah, true. Like, like, the, I mean, when I during the first season and when I did interviews, I think um, when I actually did the one, I had like the whole group on there. I think that one time before I invited you to come on by yourself, this is actually the way how I recorded that uh, audio. And there's nothing wrong with you know to me and be all means. I mean, I might have to do some interviews where it's just gonna probably be over the phone or something like that, or it might be just you know. Maybe somewhere they just don't want to be in a video. I mean, you know, there'll be people that just don't want to do that stuff. But um, right, you know, we we always say we're always happy that there's. To to me, I, I always say Chris B always says this is myself. Um, my thoughts are it's always nice that there are decent people out there, um, including Martel. I, I can express this enough. I probably talked about this too much, everyone, on our podcast, but I cannot express enough of how much this guy is going to go out of his way <laughs> to actually help me out. Um, even though I do drive him nuts talking about it. I do. <laughs> I do. But I, I will say one thing is that when you find those people, wherever they are in the world, okay, if you're in 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 North America, if you're in Central South America, if you're in, the, you know, if you're in the Middle East, India, if you're in Japan, wherever you are, Asian countries, if you're in Europe, anywhere around the world, you know, when you find that person, Africa, oh, I forgot Africa, sorry. Hold on, we can't forget about Africa, buddy. I almost forgot about it. Otherwise, Martel would be like, Chris would be like, oops, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's a shame I'm not, on you. I'm sorry, I'm not shaming anybody. Just forgot about it, forgive me. But you know what, when you find those people that you can connect with and be friends with, you know, you know what, it's good things, you know, all good things, you know, really. We do know that little things will give you hiccups in life so we know that we know that sometimes things will happen right but we have to look at it this way little things i've had little bad things go on this week so little bad things are something i could actually overcome you know which is good 
Right. And, and, and it's crazy that we, you know, granted, now we're just talking about COVID and, and everything with the health thing. You know, there's a lot of things. I was just talking to a woman to, today that was, we were just talking about, you know what? I think the hazard pay, you know, what about like, like all these um, other incentives that our countries get, like Europe, you know, which the next podcast will be talking about that. So I don't want to get too much detail, but you know, that's, that's, that's a good point. You know, there's she brought some good pointers and we'll talk about the next one, you know? So I never like to give everything away. I never like to we just make a little snips to make you interested <laughs> to be like, Ooh, I need to listen to that one. Mm-hmm. So you say, well, we try to keep it interesting. We try to. It's, it's not like you'd be working hard for the money. I mean, hey, we have to hustle, do our regular jobs, which sure. I know is the most exciting. I hate but it. Someday, <laughs> someday, we're going to hustle enough where the podcast will be our our gig, our thing. Sure. Our cup of tea every day. And just, just think, who you got to answer to? Well, I have to answer to Martel, okay, because he is actually the owner, CEO, board director of my else. I'm just the co-host, so I'm just the I'm just the pretty girl that just you know likes to have fun and randomly talk about everything. All right, so guys, you hear my phone beep right now? That's because Tina Marie is calling, so she's gonna have to wait. I'm gonna call her back when I'm done. We're done recording. <laughs> All right, yeah. So we definitely will not be able to take that call at this time. Yeah, to- I don't. I don't think I want you guys to hear that conversation at all. No. Um. So maybe we should yeah, let's, let's wrap it up for this week. So thank you very much for listening to the same cast, different day. I'm your co-host, Crystal B. You can check me out on my social medias at you can check me out on Crystal B on Facebook. You can check me out on TikTok at yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I lost my straight up thought on God, TikTok. Was Care Bear Wisconsin's some yeah. I don't remember. Care, yeah, you can check me out at Miss Care Bear WI. I don't know how I had a blank. What happened? I don't know. Maybe it's because I was laying down, maybe because I had to do the phone thing and stuff. And they can also check me out on the apparently the uh, G- Gen X apparently side of Snapchat. I guess Snapchat apparently is for old people. I stand on that. I stand on it. Snapchat the, is for the, old people. The boomer Snapchat. Yes. Um, and that is, I'm not a boomer though. I'm only 34, dude. I'm only 34. Um, you can check me out there at DJ Care Bear 131. So, and Mr. Martell, our host, where where are all your fancy social media apps at? So they can find me on the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, and the TikTok at Martell Rowland. It's my uh. Uh, username handles where they call them that's where you can find me you can find a podcast on um, Facebook it's just the same cast different day podcast and then on Instagram it's at same cast DFNT day podcast on Instagram um, yeah so thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of same cast different day podcast don't forget you can check me out on uh to get uh links to all those different things you check me out on direct dot direct dot me slash martha rolling don't forget to check out the podcast at direct dot me slash same cast every day podcast and don't forget you can check out crystal b which is direct dot me slash crystal b care bear 131 oh care bear 131 my mistake <laughs> that's all good that's make, all good make sure y'all check it out and don't forget to leave us that five star review if you're listening on apple Podcasts. don't forget to drop us a uh a review on there also along with audible for those of you who listen on audible so thank you all for tuning in to the same cast different day podcast this has been an official but fun production